Welcome to the Essential Biomechanics Podcast. This is your place to listen to the most important topics in orthodontic biomechanics. Let's get started with your host, Professor Gustavo Gamero. Hello everyone, I'm Gustavo Gamero, and it's my pleasure to share with you my first podcast about the book, The Ten Fundamental Concepts of Biomechanics. Basically, I would say that the concepts presented in this ebook, which you can download for free from my website or social medias, constitute the foundations of our clinical practice. If you apply the knowledge of scientific biomechanics in your clinical routine, the quality of your treatments will improve and you will work much more efficiently. Today, we'll discuss the fundament number two. The center of resistance constitutes the direction sensor of the resulting movement. Center of resistance. You are always on my mind. In the past, some philosophers believed that the heart was the housing of the human soul. Nowadays, I suggest that we could use a similar analogy regarding teeth. I mean, we could consider that every tooth or group of teeth have its most relevant part concentrated in a restricted area, the center of resistance, or CR. In the metaphor, the CR constitutes the heart of the tooth, its most important part, a special sensor, and thus we should always look at it while making our movement predictions. Definition Orthodontic literature defines CR as the point at which force is caused the parallel movement of all points of the tooth. This type of movement, as we will see next, is called translation or bodily movement. Translation can occur in any direction, provided that every part of the tooth moves parallel with a force vector. For example, we can see a horizontal translation of the incisors or an oblique translation of the molars. The location of the CR. In a monoradicular tooth, CR is usually located between the cervical and middle thirds of the distance between marginal ridge and apex. In multiradicular teeth, the CR is commonly found in the apical part of the bifurcation or trifurcation of the roofs, depending on the evaluated tooth. The localization of the CR depends on the number of factors. The CR locations mentioned in the literature usually apply to teeth with normal roof anatomy and with adequate bone support. However, we need to be aware that the location of CR depends greatly on the roof structure and conditions of the supporting tissues. For example, in a normal central incisor with good bone support, the CR is usually located at a distance of 10 mm from the center of the clinical crown where we bound our brackets. However, if the incisor shows a severe roof resorption, this distance will be significantly lower. On the other hand, if the patient presents a loss of alveolar bone, the CR will be located closer to the apex and more distant, therefore, from the bracket. The orthodontists dealing with periodontally reduced dentitions need to understand that the CR of this teeth moves to a more apical position. Teeth connected by a rigid wire behave as a single unit. In clinical practice, we usually form groups of dental units by joining the teeth with segments of rigid wires. What should be clear to the professional is the fact that each group of teeth has its specific CR in this case. For example, if you want to perform a translational retraction of only two upper central incisors. The height indicated for your force line of action should be 3.5 mm above the marginal ridge. The reason for it is that this is the estimated CR height of this group of two teeth, considering a normal bone support. However, if you need to retract the four upper incisors, your line of action should rise up to 5 mm from the marginal ridge because this is the estimated height of the CR of a group of four upper incisors. And finally, if you want to try translating the six anterior teeth simultaneously, your line of action should rise up to seven millimeters above the marginal ridge. 
always consider the CR of the group you want to move. If you think of an upper dental arch joined by a rigid wire, either conjugated or attached to the omega loops, we can estimate the behavior of this group of teeth as if it were a single unit. And in the case of the upper arch, it's estimated that its CR is located between the roofs of the premolars. The CR varies according to the direction of movement. In addition to the factors previously mentioned, such as radicular structure, degree of alveolar bone support, and number of grouped teeth, another important factor to consider in the estimation of the CR is the direction of the movement performed. For example, if you want to translate a lower incisor in the buccal lingual direction, the CR is commonly about 8 mm from the bracket. However, if you wish to make a body movement in the mesial distal direction, considering the same tooth, the CR will be located a little more to occlusion compared to the previous movement. The explanation is that the resistance to the buccal lingual movement is greater than the resistance to the distal movement. Why? Because the roofs of these teeth are more tapered in the mesial distal direction. The take home message here is we need to consider the CR as a three dimensional area for a proper dental movement planning. And that's all for today, guys. I hope you are enjoying listening to the 10 fundamental concepts of biomechanics. Please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you next week for our episode number three, in which we will talk about the fundament number three. Appliance are just tools for generating force, moments, and couples. See you there.